I'm Richard R.J. Eskow, and we are back on the Zero Hour, and I'd like to talk to you for a minute, as we often do about the Silicon Valley, about the bro culture and the grandiosity of the billionaires who run and um, profit off the businesses there. Uh, there's a lot of discussion in the Silicon Valley nowadays about whether we're in the middle of another technology bubble. I would argue we are. These these services and, and technologies are wildly overpriced. I think they're going to collapse again, but it doesn't matter for the moment if I'm right or wrong. What matters more than anything else is the distortionary effect of the enormous amounts of money floating around the Silicon Valley and what it's doing to our culture as a whole. Now, that culture got a little bit of a shock this week when a Harvard professor named Jill Lepore, L-E-P-O-R-E, wrote a piece for The New Yorker challenging one of their most sacred tenets and beliefs and dogmas in the Silicon Valley, which is that it's cool to quote-unquote disrupt things. They're all about disrupting. They want to disrupt technology. They think they're disrupting the way of uh, that everybody else does business and they idolize uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook for saying move fast and break things well you know a three-year-old moves fast and breaks things so why is that inherently great well it's great because there is a guru of management named Clayton Christensen who's a big believer in the power of disruption, how that creates innovation and change. And uh, Jill Lepore, who is a historian, uh, wrote a piece saying that much of Clayton Christensen's work is erroneous, that he cherry-picks his case studies in order to support his thesis that disruption is awesome and that technology is inherently transformative. Now, I read her piece. It's a very balanced piece. She says that, you know, sometimes you need to change and disrupt the way of doing things uh, in an organization or a kind of business. Sometimes you don't. I mean, that seems reasonable to me. She says that sometimes Clayton Christensen is right. Sometimes he's wrong. Seems reasonable to me. She says sometimes technology does great things. Other times it's not a solution to a problem. Seems reasonable to me. Doesn't seem so reasonable to the guys in the Silicon Valley, the bro culture is very, very, very upset. And that includes a guy we've complimented on this show in the past, Mark Andreessen, who is a a venture capitalist, a very wealthy and successful guy. We liked it when he uh, he took on, he was the only one besides ourselves who found out what was really behind uh, billionaire Tom Perkins' rant against uh, Occupy and the San Francisco Chronicle and everything else, which is that the San Francisco Chronicle dared to criticize his ex-wife's hedges. And only Andreessen and ourselves were on top of that. We, we gave him props for that, because uh, I think he even beat us by a couple hours in finding that out. So, got nothing against Mark, except uh, here he got very upset, and he tweeted out things like, what does Jill Lepore, PhD in American Studies, think about quantum entanglement? Meaning, in an ironic, I suppose, sort of way, that because she has a PhD in history or American studies, she's not qualified. It would be like her talking about particle physics, nuclear physics, to talk about the awesome things we do here in the Silicon Valley. Well, guess what, Silicon Valley bros? What you do is not quantum entanglement. It's not particle physics, buddies. It's not particle physics. It's just simple business, and you guys are grandiose about it. Uber, Uber transformative. Uber is a taxi cab calling system for people who run their own own personal taxi cab services. It's a switchboard. There's nothing innovative about it. The sharing economy, we had the sharing economy 40 years ago. It was called the Weekender, where people could run classified ads and it was thrown in with your newspaper. You didn't see the guys who who published the Weekender so that somebody could buy a new hedge trimmer or sell their used lawnmower. You didn't see cover stories on Wired Magazine about how this paper classified ad thing is disrupting and it's transformative because you didn't have billions of dollars flying around and that wasn't making people grandiose, okay? So what does Jill Lepore know about quantum entanglement? Probably about as much as the guys who did Uber. What does Jill Lepore know about Uber? As much as you and I know about the classified ads that used to be at the, uh, used to get bundled with your Sunday newspaper. So Ro Khanna, the guy who was who was creamed. We had Yasha Levine on talking about 
his uh, campaign was creamed, but still is going to be a finalist for um, the congressional seat in the Silicon Valley. He ran, you know, with this whole, uh, I'm, I'm part of this culture and we're going to disrupt politics. Well, you know what? Disruption is sometimes good. It's sometimes bad. You know, sharing economy, again, Airbnb, it's, it's high-tech classified ads. It's a high-tech version of the bulletin boards where people used to sell things at the co-op or in the basement of a church or a synagogue. It ain't nothing fancy except it's, it's newer technology. And by the way, that technology was invented by the U.S. government. Now, one other thing, uh, and this really, really made me laugh. Okay, um, the latest big buzzy startup on... Um, on the uh, uh, in the tech community now is a technology called Yo, Y O Yo, and what Yo does is um, it allows you to send the word Yo to somebody else who met, who belongs to the network. That's it. It's an app for your phone that allows you to to say Yo. That's it. And and yet it got a million dollars in startup research. Well, I guess I would say if I was uh, working in this economy where every dumb idea is treated as a second calling, as the second coming, I'd probably throw a million bucks at, at yo myself. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's just a technology. It's a silly little gimmick. And yet we actually had somebody quoted in the Financial Times saying of yo... It's a whole new form of communication. It is? Really? Tell it to Ali G, who was saying, you know, 20 years ago on, on television. It's a whole new form of communication. This is how grandiose these guys have gotten. Well, get what? Guess what? Yo is not a whole new form of communication. And by the way, there's a huge security problem with it now. So people are saying not to use it. Disruption. If it ain't broke, don't disrupt it. That's the principle here. So there are two principles, I guess I would say. One is too much money makes you stupid. We're seeing that in the Silicon Valley. Or it attracts stupid people and the thinking that goes along with it. Yes, once in a while somebody makes a lot of money with a stupid idea. It's still a stupid idea. Two, if it ain't broke, don't disrupt it. That includes music. That includes people's professions, including taxi cab driver. That includes government. That includes society. Sometimes disruption is the right thing to do. Sometimes it's not. So why don't we design apps that build and improve rather than those that disrupt just for the sake of disruption? Why? Because that would take brains. You'd need brains. We need more real thinking in the Silicon Valley. And beyond that, all I have to say to the bros there is, yo. I'm Richard R.J. Eskow, and this is The Zero Hour.